Good morning! So today we're working on looking on how to use and do loops. We've got our package and project already set up here in Eclipse so we can get that ready to go. Our runner's already built and we have our start method begun. The first thing we want to look at is how to put together a while loop. And so we're going to make a new method. It's going to be a void method because it's not going to return any value and it's going to be called while test. So public and then void and our method name is called while test. Again, keeping it the practice of naming things so it reflects what they do if it's a method. And this is testing a while loop. And we have our public void while test. Now, we need to go ahead and put in our structure for the while loop. Again, the first part of the structure is we need to declare and initialize a value. And we are using comments on the code again at this because we want to help ourselves keep in mind what we're working on as we do it. And so declare initialize a value for the loop. And our loop is going to be an int based loop, so we're having an int. And again with our variable names, just like with our method names, our variable names reflect what they are. And so this is going to be a counter for a while loop. And so this can be just called counter. And we're going to set a default value of 0. The first part of a while loop, again, is we write while. And as you note, in Eclipse, it turns nice, bold, pink, magenta colored. So we know immediately that it's a keyword of Java. Then we put our parens, our parens identify that we are entering the condition. While counter is less than 10. And do I put a semicolon here? No, very good, because we want it to work. And because of the magic of Eclipse, we have automatically matching vertical braces for our squiggles, and we're ready to go. And our while loop, we want it to have it do something 10 times. We can have it do a quick little, we'll do a quick little GUI on that again, because it's fast and easy. So we'll do J option pane dot show message dialog. And our first parameter is null, saying it doesn't have a parent. And our second parameter, we're going to use a little bit of a string to talk about this. The loop counter variable value is colon space quotes. And then we'll use the concatenation operator, a.k.a. the plus sign. And we will put counter in the line with a semicolon. Increment or change the variable. And we want this to go 10 times. Counter plus plus, which moves it up by one. Now, this is great, this is wonderful. Uh, what happens if I run it right now? Because we don't ever actually call while test. So we'll go inside here into start and call while test. Open and close parens, semicolon, save, and here we go. We've got our loop project, we're going to run this, click on the lovely green play button. And we're going to run this as an application. We say OK. The loop counter variable value is 0, 1. And stops. So we have a clear structure there. It goes through. We declare the variable, initialize it to a value of 0. We check our value inside our condition of the while test. We have our loop body, denoted by the vertical braces or squiggles. We have our action of the loop. And finally, our last line of code inside our while loop, so we can always remember that we hit it, is the incrementation of our variable. We go back in, repeat, check, 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 ad infinitum. So we have our while test taken care of. We're going to make a same version of this, but do a for loop and we'll count down. So we're going to make a new method. It'll be public void for test. No parameters again. And we're going to have this be a for loop. So we just do for int. And it is going to be a loop counter. We're using camel case. So we can uh, keep naming our variables properly and have it look nice when we read it. Loop counter is going to be equal to 10, because remember we're counting down. Semicolon at the end, loop counter, 
is greater than zero. Semicolon again, and we'll put a space in there to make it look nice and pretty. And finally, loop counter minus minus, so it decrements each time. And we'll have the same information, j up champagne dot show message dialog. Again, well, the parent component is null, and its message will be similar. We have our four test. Starts off at 10, checks to make sure it's greater than zero, goes down by one every time. So this should be a nice, lovely little countdown timer. We're going to comment out this line of code, because we only want to do this once. And we'll have four test right here. We'll play it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, done. So we have used two different control structures. We've used a while loop and a for loop. We've had it count up. We've had it count back down. And now we are going to add one little thing just to make it a little bit cooler. And so we're going to count up. We're going to count down, and then we're going to blast off. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Everybody. Blast off. <laughs> we have our structure of our while loop. We declare and initialize, we have our condition, we have our message in our loop body, we increment our variable. In our for loop, we have, in the first part is the initialize and declare, declare and init, a semicolon, we have our condition, another semicolon, and our incrementation. Notice how the incrementation can be negative, we're going down. We could also go up like we did inside the while loop. And at the end, we put our lovely little statement of blast off so we can be a little silly. Hopefully this will help you understand both while loops and for loops better. You have a couple examples of code to go along with this. Here are this. If you want to have any questions, please go ahead and check the website out and have a great day.